when you begin working on some of your initial Adobe Illustrator projects, it's kind of dicey trying to figure out exactly what settings to use um, when you're prepping something and getting it ready for print. What I'm going to walk you through is some of the methods that I use in my personal workflow and hopefully this will help you too going forward. We're going to first go through and check our file. We're going to delete any non-printing layers that we have. Then I'm going to rasterize the clipping paths. I will expand the appearance of any special effects that I'm using as well as rasterize those items and then we'll save the PDF for press quality. And the reason that we're doing all this rasterizing and expanding appearance is not all press printers are set up for um, printing some of the special effects that come with Adobe Illustrator 6 and higher. So it's a good idea to rasterize the appearance of some of these things to ensure that your output matches your expectations. So I have this little project and it's creating this vintage style postcard. You can see that if I bring up my layers, I had uh, some non-printing items. So if I hide all of these things, you can see that you know I have some non-printing items that were letting me know where it was safe to put content on the back. Um, what were some of the safe content zones for the front? And so I do have this non-printing layer that I no longer need. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and either drag it to the trash or delete the selection. It, said, it warns me that it contains artwork. Do you want to delete this layer? And I can say yes. I'm done with that now. Now I can show my items and there's no harm done. Those were just my guideline layers. And so I just need to get rid of them. Now if we inspect the file even more closely, you can see I've got some text here. Uh, I've got text with special effects. If we bring up the appearance panel, you can see that I've got quite a few different effects applied to this particular text and others throughout the postcard. Uh, the thing about that is not all press checks are going to be able to honor the effects that I have. So if I were to receive or go to a press check or receive a PDF for approval, I might be a little disappointed in the way my effects turned out. So what I need to do is first expand the appearance of the items that have these special effects. So if I hold the shift key down and select all three items that have this special effect applied, I can go under Object, Expand Appearance. When it does that, it just kind of treats these as grouped vector objects. You can see when I select them, it just says a group of contents. I'm going to close my appearance panel and zoom in to one of these little items so we can see what's going on. And it, see, it treats it as grouped vector objects, which is kind of cool but it did maintain my drop shadow effect. It maintained the shape that I had applied. So all of the things, all the special effects that I had applied in the appearance panel have been honored. Another thing that's a good idea to do is to outline any text that you might have. So if this is the back of the postcard, I didn't have a lot going on because we needed to leave room for the address, the indicia, a little message over here but sometimes there's some small print on the back side of postcards and in case the printer doesn't have the typefaces that I have or if I intend to share this file in any way I'm going to outline this text so I'm going to go under type create outlines and this is just something I'm in the habit of doing creating outlines for my text before I send it to print it used to be that that wasn't a great idea because it would make it a little bit thicker. So if you were using uh, very thin or delicate typefaces, it's not always the best idea in the world. Sometimes it's better to provide the typeface to the printer. But in this case, this is just fine print, not very important, not very interesting. So it's okay to use outlines. I also have quite a few objects here that are actually using clipping paths 
and I need to rasterize those because I've printed these in the past and it comes out with a white box around in which the uh, the print press didn't understand the clipping path necessarily or the computer did not translate it well so I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select all of these items that are using a clipping path and I can actually see that in my layers each one of these items is a separate letter and if I expand one of them you can see that it's a clip group that uses a letter form path and an image so these clip groups actually need to be rasterized so under object I'm going to go to rasterize the color mode that we're working in is CMYK I'm going to keep the resolution set to 300 because 300 is sort of the minimum requirement for print. I do want the background to be transparent because I do want to honor those, um, those paths. So I want it to actually clip or cut the image. And I'm going to uncheck preserve spot colors because this uh, we are not using any spot colors. We're expecting to use CMYK four color process for this project. So I can uncheck preserve spot colors and now I'm going to click OK. You can see the progress and it does it very quickly. So now these items, if we look in layers and we look at one of these up close, if you expand it just shows that it's a cropped image. And these layers are now actually I could delete because all of these layers are no longer needed. So I can hold down the shift key and select them and send them to the trash. It said that it was containing artwork for the letter N, but it's not. Um, so the next thing that I want to do after rasterizing my clipping paths is I want to clean up this file. Make sure that there aren't any stray paths, pixels, or empty text box. So under Object, Path, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and choose Clean Up. Clean Up is the last selection under Object and Path and it's going to go through and it's going to clean up any stray points, unpainted objects, or empty text pads that I may have left on the artboard accidentally. And I click OK. The last thing I want to do is check my links because I do have some linked images in here. So I'm going to bring up Window and Links and I just want to double check that my links are embedded and this is the symbol for an embedded image in my links panel. If they were not, if it was just uh, if it was just a link and this was visible, if this little link was visible, I could then choose the drop down menu and embed image. But in this case my images are already embedded so that is cool and I think I'm ready to go. So I have two artboards here. I'm going to go under File, Save As, and I'm going to choose Adobe PDF. And I'm going to use this name, Anderson Postcard. It's my last name with the name of the project, and that's fairly typical, or it's the name of the client, depending on what project I'm working on. And I'm going to use the artboards. In fact, I'm going to have all of them included. There are two artboards. I'm going to have all of them included in this PDF and click Save. Now I'm going to get another dialog box here for saving the Adobe PDF. This is going to press, so I'm going to choose Press Quality. And that already pre-selects some options for me that Illustrator has. But I have a couple more things I want to check. I had set this file up for an eighth of an inch bleed all of the way around. So if I click here, Use Document Bleed Settings, and also make sure that this is toggled on to constrain the width and height, and use my Document Bleed Settings, you can see that it's set it to 0.125.
Another thing that my printer has asked me to do is include the trim marks. So I'm going to click here and check trim marks. Now sometimes if you have an exclamation point next to summary, that means that there's something wrong with your file. Um, maybe you didn't rasterize or flatten some transparencies. And Illustrator will actually let you know. So if you click on summary, if there's any warnings here, it will let you know that you need to check your file a little bit more. But when we're ready to go, and we're happy with our trim mark selected and the document bleed settings, I'm going to save the PDF. And it usually does it very quickly, and I can actually navigate to and open that PDF and see what I've got going on. So, if I navigate to, and of course this was in one of your assignments, so I find this postcard, and I'm going to open it in Reader so you can see what the printer is going to see. Give it a moment. And you can actually see how those trim marks are incorporated. And so once the file is printed, the printer will actually know where to trim the file. And as I zoom out, we kind of get to see, we can actually see the next page. And again, the trim marks are included. So that is my typical workflow when I'm setting up files to print. And I hope that helps you going forward in setting up your own files for print.